I'm Mr. Possible, Joshua Potts, always with the brother with the same mother, Aaron Potts, Super Hot Potts, and your favorite two black runners coming at you every single two black two. Okay, okay, yes, Ooh. yes, 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 Tim Man, Ali, two black two. fell back there <laughs> has to, had to had to go in because it's two black tuesday with tim in a tim in tuesday True. that don't happen very often bro bro this is our second ever live podcast we just did our first ever live podcast what almost a month ago now in new york and the fact that we're doing another one here at run republic shout out joe bro show Doc, joe dakamura yes, for letting sir. us use this space this beautiful space and right before cross champs the next day where we'll be course side and our guests right here they'll be like Running a 10k at Mount Sac, doesn't that, that, that like, sound It's crazy. hard for me to say, bro, because I don't want to do that. I don't want to run a 10k at Mount Sac, and the fact that they're voluntarily wanna run wanting to do this, like they'll find out for a second tomorrow just how how grueling that course can be. But should we just introduce? Her? Yeah, go ahead, let them know. Let just the go people into know it, who it go is. Go into it. So first off, we got the pride of Australia. You already know from Sydney, U18 yes, national sir. champion from Australia as well. He's an Arkansas Razorback along Pigs Woo Suey. You feel me? Sugar We're Rush 5k champion. As well, 1339, 359 guy, Cam Griffey, Cameron Griffith on the podcast with us. Also, we got a prep 2000 meter steeplechase beast across Ooh. the pond, an NCAA All America from, Jermaine. from EKU. We're talking about Jermaine Cole Coleman <laughs> coming in as well. Then we have the US High School Phenom, 2015 Foot Locker Champ, 2019 World Championship Qualifier, founding father of 10 men elite. That's what the they say on the website, Drew Hunter yes, on the sir. podcast as well, bro. Just Jermaine, Drew, Cam, how's just everything going down in Southern California? Well, it's getting dark kind of outside now, but how's it going? Just being down here ready from outside tomorrow. It's going well. Yeah, we're in really California. It's really similar to Australia. Oh, yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet, I bet, I bet. <laughs> I got a place to stay next time I'm out there. Hey, everyone's welcome. I'm ever out there. <laughs> But before we get into just like uh, what we really want to discuss on the podcast with the two groups and then we'll get more into it, just how do you feel with just racing a 10K out Mount Sac tomorrow? We were talking about a little bit off wax before, but like that's something for me and Aaron. I, my first time racing Mount Sac, I was probably like six or seven years old and it was a very vivid and tragic experience for me. And ever since I've raced in high school, I've had some <laughs> other tragic experiences as well. But to race a 10K at it, have you had some, heard some horror stories already? Are people been giving you any advice, Cam? Or what, how's well, it? Jermaine and I only got in this afternoon, so we haven't actually seen the course yet. But oh. every single one of our teammates has been like, it's the hardest course you've ever gonna run your entire <laughs> life. So I'm currently crapping myself. Um, <laughs> And to do two laps of that, that sounds like a lot of fun. And obviously your description of it right now is really, you know, helping that. So I'm uh, looking forward to it. Tomorrow. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> my first time running Mount Sac, or I don't know if this is my first time, but it's my distinct memory. When I was like 10 or nine years old, I was running and I got up switchbacks and I threw up all over myself. <laughs> And hey, then I was beast. coming out. Yeah, it's kind of beast, though. You know, hey. props. I'm coming down, switchbacks. My parents, they're in the crowd tonight. But they see me throw up all over my jersey. That's they're nasty. like, wait, what, what, what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? But I wanted to ask Drew. Like, Drew, and when you were in high school, I'm sure you heard about Mount Sac. What did you think when you heard about a 10K being there? And I also just wanted to know, like, how fast do you think you could have ran there in high school? Yeah, well, uh, it's a soft course record, so yeah, yeah, it, is. it is soft. I, I really do believe I that. definitely could have beat it um, <laughs> if I came out and raced, but uh, no, I uh, I, I think serious. I'm not joking. He's like, I definitely would have done it. Whatever, whoever it is. I don't know if anyone got that joke, but maybe. I got it. Okay. We got okay. that. I definitely got that. Um, uh, Philip Roca. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Legend. Um, but no, I think we're all really excited. We never get to. It's rare that we get to run a team race together, and I've been wanting to, you know. You hear about I, I was yeah. the biggest running nerd. I'm sure you guys are in that same category. Oh, yes. But like I knew what Mount Sac was when I was a freshman in high school and being from the opposite <laughs> side of the yeah. country, I was never going to run it. So it's now cool to kind of come back and do it twice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then for you, Jermaine, like you're all the way across the pond, you know, like do you even I know you didn't go to the course today, but I'm pretty sure you've seen video or anything. Have you seen a cross country course anything like this before? No, nothing, nothing like it. It's uh very different to what you see in the UK, you know. I'm not really sure it's 
classified as cross country because you know it's <laughs> a dirt path. Yeah, yeah, that's what you Californians call cross country. You know, where in the UK we're more more accustomed to running through ponds and rivers and that sort of <laughs> stuff. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound like cross country either. You're like, what? Well, yeah, but we'll, we'll see how, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, it, we drove past it and those guys were just pointing it out and I just thought they were just, you know, joking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm definitely excited to go on, like, you know, run it and, uh, you know, walk up some hills. <laughs> I'm curious to see what you two, oh, my bad. I'm curious to see what you two think about the course too, because, like, the joke is that, you know, Mount Sac course is soft, but. Over there, across the pond, yeah, you're jumping through ponds, doing cannonballs. Like you, you all run crazy courses for cross country. So I'm wondering, is it actually that hard uh, once you guys once you guys uh, deal with it? I've gone soft, you know. <laughs> you know, it's been. I was 17, when, you know, when I left the UK. So I've not run a cross country race in the UK. So once I got a, an excuse to never run cross country in the UK, I took it. Yeah, so, yeah. So I, uh, I, I feel that. I'm just as. Uh, the week is the rest of you Americans. <laughs> hey, hey, I understand, I understand. <laughs> but before we get more into to the mountain side cross country talk towards the end of the podcast, I also wanted to go to, the, I know this is a, you get this question a lot talking about how you got into running, but besides just the running, besides all of that, just what is like one of your first sports or like competitive sports memories? Cause I feel like mine's definitely just with my family, like being competitive with them as be from basketball or like getting pushed down playing tag because I was the youngest. So like they bullied me a lot. So like, what was like one of your like first sports memories? If it could be anything, Cam. Uh, my mom always likes to tell the story of the first cross country race I ever ran in third grade. It was like, I think it was a 2K, uh -huh. just like around our high school or around the school. Um, and she likes to tell the story of like she's like oh damn where did cam go like i don't know where, i don't know where he is i didn't see him at the finish or whatever and apparently i was up in the stands like having a picnic and yeah. like <laughs> eating my lunch like because i won by like a couple minutes and i was yeah. like oh i guess i'm decent at running and so my mom, my, that's always my mom's favorite story to tell so i always like to repeat that one hey hey i like that one too i like that one that's a b story that's a b, <laughs> that's story. A b story drew do you have one of your what was one of your first sports memory it doesn't have to really pertain to running but what was your first sports memories you could think of the first thing that came to mind was well i did every sport i mean i tried everything um so that but the first moment that i thought of was i ran one track race when i was probably 10 years old mm -hmm. my parents were youth coaches and they coach a youth team and and i absolutely hated it i won the race and i was like i am never doing this again didn't run a step and then freshman year i decided to go out for cross country um <laughs> but i just think that's really funny because of now it's my job yeah. so um yeah that was the first thing that came to mind and about for you jermaine I think I'll keep it running related. I guess uh, I started running quite late. I probably uh, maybe uh, 16 when I first started, you know, first started actually running. And uh, I remember like when I was like 15, I don't know, is that like a, is that a freshman in high school? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a cross, like, we, you had to run cross country in, like in class. And we had a, uh, my high school, we had a female national champion. So I remember running this cross country race. It's like running, I'm in the lead for a little bit because I'm actually pretty good. And she just comes flying by. Yeah, I got beat by like a minute by this girl, <laughs> and I was like, Phew. you know, I, that was like really humbling to see. So I think m my first memory is just getting, you know, kind of just showing how uh, how humbling the sport can be. It doesn't matter. You didn't discriminate. You know, we were in the same distance, and she she put a Florida McLeish name while she put a minute on me in this race. So that was like, oh, this is a this is a hard sport. This is not necessarily that fun. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like definitely for Cam and Drew, like the reason why we separated you three is because. You three had very like successful prep careers in high school and being uh, uh, cross country is still related to us being like in our prep careers in high school as well. Like Cam being a national champion in Australia, Drew being a national champ champion in the US and then uh, Jermaine as well. Just what was kind of like your guys' mindset like back then when you were winning those titles as like as as just like an 18, 15 or 16 year old, like, is that still similar to what it is now? Like, what is the different mindset that you kind of had that set you apart, Drew? <laughs> um, that, that's it right there. <laughs> uh, I think none of these guys, except for maybe Max, because I went to high school with Max. No, I was like the most type A, serious, dedicated, like I was, going to bed at nine o'clock every mm -hmm. night and i'm not like that at all now i feel like i'm so more like lax and kind of want to have fun and, and it's not like i didn't have fun but i was so so serious in high school and 
Um, I think like the thing that I took the most from that is just I learned just how to work hard, mm -hmm. and I think that was is so important for any athlete. Is there are times when you just need to put your head down and go to work, whether it's cross training or running or you know just the little stuff that you have to do in the gym or whatever. And I think that has been the biggest thing I've translated is I I don't like I want to do everything right. So when I show up to a starting line, it's like okay, I I'm not gonna look back and be like, well, I lost because of this. Yeah. I can I can really say I left it all out there. So. Um, that's how I was in high school and I feel like I've carried some of that over but now I'm a little bit more probably fun to be around um, <laughs> they don't know so <laughs> but um, but yeah I'd say that's that's my answer mine's I wasn't as good as during high school but uh, still you know three-time national champion I was a little different I guess I leaned a lot more onto my natural talent yeah. you know I didn't go to bed at nine yeah you know, I got to bed at 3 a.m. you know I Dang. didn't eat very healthily yeah, just because uh, I was very naturally talented and uh, I just kind of just was arrogant in that in that aspect to the fact that I knew that I could get away with just because I was just better. I could get away with things. So I guess for me, uh, how that's translated is that when I got to college, you know, you've gone from being a national champion in the UK, but then I came to college and I had, you know, multiple state champions and national champions from all these different schools. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, the, 11 pl the, the playing field's a lot more level. And I had to le learn really fast that natural talent doesn't get you that far when everybody's just as talented. So for me, you know, it was a, it was a learning curve, and it it kind of like helped me realize that I had to work harder because I didn't work hard at first, and I was trash mm -hmm, when I yeah. first got to college. Yeah. So it kind of gave me that uh that eye opening, you know, wake up moment that hey, you know, everyone's as good as you now, so you got to outwork them, and that's kind of how it's taken me to you know this level. I've learned that I have to work hard harder than I did. That's interesting to hear too, like hearing what Drew, what you just said, being like super type A and Jermaine, you're like, you learned um, that a, you- There's that, a balance. You yeah. find the middle. He was one end to a spectrum and I was the other end and you gotta find that middle ground. You can, you gotta be type A to a certain extent, but you also gotta enjoy your life. If you but don't enjoy it, you're not gonna run well. Drew, he said he went to college and that's where he was able to like being around his teammates. That's where he found out like, oh, like I gotta work harder and do all this. You coming straight out of high school going pro like was it just the competitions that taught you that or where did you start to learn that yeah I mean same thing as you know Jermaine just said I think like I went from winning high school races and you know competing against pros and all that to all of a sudden where I had a good race if I was in fifth or sixth my first year as a pro and it sucked like I think one of the hardest aspects of our level, but any level at this sport is winning a race. Winning yeah. is so hard. It takes a different, it's really easy to get second place. It's mm. really easy to get second, like, um, and I think like- Not NCAAs, that's, yeah, that's yeah, really, yeah. really- No, it's really <laughs> easy. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. hard yeah. to get second NCAAs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but what I mean is the percentage from second to first is, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a really hard road. And I think uh, I almost kind of lost that I, you, I became out of touch of winning, and, and over the last few years, I've had to kind of cultivate that winning mindset again and really try to, you know, compete um, to win races. So um, that was probably the hardest thing for me is, you know, my first year is just kind of relearning how to win. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't mean – like, especially the cross-country aspect, I feel like winning in cross-country is such a such a different mindset, mm -hmm. especially, like, Connor Mance, the fact that he won, like – the yeah, past really. seven, yeah, he hasn't lost since like 2019 and won two NCAA championships basically. It's crazy, especially in cross country. But going back to the question, like with Cam, how was that for you in high school? What was your mindset, mindset like when you were winning national championships down under? I'd say I was probably kind of in between these two guys. Also, the, perfect, definitely, the perfect balance. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely not the perfect yeah, balance. Okay. I definitely lean way more towards Jermaine's side in the sense that I was like far more lax and I, I'm also just ignorant. I didn't understand how yeah. to be a good runner and how to be a good athlete. Um, I was fortunate to have a really good coach and you know he was a really good runner in his own right. And so he kind of definitely showed me the ropes and, and how to compete at like a national level. Um, but yeah, I do think you can get away with it a bit more coming from a smaller country mm -hmm. like Australia or even the UK because you don't have like that many high schoolers yeah. who are that serious about the sport trying to do well. I mean, granted, I, I was still very fortunate to do well in a smaller country, but yeah, definitely was not like me winning an Australian champs title is not as impressive as Drew doing it. Like, it's 
it, Australia is way smaller than than uh, the U.S. So yeah. And that was I was kind of thinking of my next question too, because I wanted to talk about the pressures that you guys have to feel as being like those top level high school athletes. And I know especially in the U.S., like bro, when you are a high school distance star, like you are literally like a star it seems like like people kids will come at you at like uh cif I mean, finals or state like, can i get your autographs like before races and stuff was it similar to that in uh like the oh you just pointed at michael yeah 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 that's one of my kids that coach but uh that's that's literally like um was it similar like that in the uk and stuff did, did you have a lot of pressure on you being that national level athlete like what was that like for you not at all did you have a lot of pressure on you being that national level athlete like what was that like for you not at all no not even a little bit wow like i was I think that was one race I was defending my title and mm -hmm. I like outside of the guys who I was racing probably not a single other person knew who I was there like the meet was small there yeah. was like maybe a hundred people there at the national championship and I mean even at um, Australians open championships is still a pretty small meet like mm -hmm. it's nothing like US um, like championships here like there's, there's very few spectators who aren't directly involved with competitors at the sport so yeah. It's, yeah, it's a very different sport in other countries, at least in Australia. I'd say in the UK it's a little bit bigger than Australia. It's we there's a, a little more of a following for uh, athletics than what he's making it sound. I don't think it's quite to the same level as the US. I think U, the US definitely encompasses athletics, cross country running. I feel like most you know high schools at least to some level, athletes will run cross country or track at some point. But uh, I think most of the pressure was just internal. You know, like going into like def when you know you're defending back-to-back -back titles, it's it's you put that pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. like even though you know you necessarily don't necessarily, uh, you know, in my instance, take you know all the little things serious when it comes to that day. You know, you you hold yourself to a certain standard that you have to. You know, you, winning is the only option, especially at that level. So I guess the pressure for me was always just what I what I put on myself and you know what my coach family family and friends expected of me you know you were expected to win and anything less than that back then was you know was a failure you know second wasn't good enough so that's kind of where the pressure came from was just kind of uh building a circle that uh wanted the same for you as you wanted and just being able to just you know never let anything else be good enough other than winning that title that sounds like a ton of pressure especially you're saying you didn't start running until you're like 16 years old and you already like you felt that pressure on yourself or you put that on yourself yeah, I mean, my, my first year running, I got second at nationals. Wow. So it was uh, my first, I didn't win, you know, mm -hmm. and, that, and that was, you know, I, I was new to the sport. I was trying to navigate my, my you know, around it, but I, I didn't win. So that was kind of the, that was kind of like, you know, I had a chip on my shoulder and it going into that next year where I want, I, you know, I needed, I knew I didn't want to come second again. And then I wanted to be the best. And then once you get that, uh, once you get that first title, you see it in the NCAA all the time. It's not easy to win the first title, but it's a lot harder to defend it. You yeah. know, Josh Kerr is an Olympic bronze medalist and, you know, wasn't able to do it out. You know, lots of lots of top athletes, you know, Obso, I, I, who beat me at NCAAs, came back another year and didn't defend. Defending's really, really hard. So I think once you've won that one national title and you've got time left to defend it, everyone's gunning for you. You know, like, whether you've got fans outside the sport, the people that are running the same events know who you are and you're the person to beat. You know, I'm sure I've said to you at Foot Locker and so it's just, you're the person, you know, it's a lose-lose. You're expected to win. So if you do win, nobody cares because you're expected to win. Yeah. And everyone's waiting for you to make one mistake and fail so they can jump on you. And that's kind of, you know, the pressures of being a favorite in, a, in any event, in any race. Man, that's tough. That's tough for 16, 17, 18, when you, you know? a star, When you a star, you a star. For real, to for me, real. For, to me, like, you being like, you got second place your first year ever running, and you weren't satisfied. You are like, nah, bro, I'm trying to be the best. And, you know, pressure bursts pipes, but perps bah, pressure bursts pipes, but it also creates diamonds. So Ooh. it's like finding that balance. That's, mm. a, that's a gem. <laughs> no pun intended. Hey. Come on, man. Hey. Then, Drew, we know you faced, like, some type of those pressures. And as Cam already alluded to, like, it's crazy out here. People be treating you definitely like a star if you're at that top elite level, even at the lower levels. Like, even if you're just, like, the best in your league, it'll be like that. But then were you able – you already talked about you were able to translate that type A mentality, but the pressures that you faced in high school, were you able to kind of, like – did you learn something from that that you still apply now to the pressures that you get now of being such a high level athlete? Uh, that's a good question. I think that something I learned is the people that um, the people that love you whether you 
run really well or don't are still gonna love you mm. and I you know it's really important as you progress throughout the sport to kind of keep that in mind and keep those people even closer um but I also think uh something I remind myself when there is pressure is like, that's where you want to be. Yeah. You don't want to be in a position where no one cares or mm -hmm. it's a race that you don't care enough about to put forth the best effort. So I think I kind of reframe it as like, it is a pressure is a privilege. It's kind of like, all right, I've earned this. There's a reason that people want to see me fail, but also like are expecting me to succeed. So, um, and I try to kind of hone in on that when I'm starting to kind of feel those pre-race jitters and whatnot. Man, I like that, bro. Pressure is a privilege. Pressure is a you got to use it to, as fuel, it sounds like. Dang, I like that. I like that. Well, that's basically all we got for for y'all three. But just good luck tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit more. Wait, actually, I got one more. I got one more. I got one more. I was thinking. I got one more. I got one more. Just kind of just about like, bro, like how? Wait, what are you thinking? Wait, wait. Oh no, I got I got something. Wait, hold on, hold on. Just how are you guys? Uh, <laughs> how are you guys preparing yourself for like this just race coming tomorrow? Like at Mount Sac. I know you and uh, Drew and Cam just coming off of wins this season, like as well, having your like these wins in this past season, just where you are preparing yourself to just race tomorrow, like a 10K, that's crazy. I mean, if I can beat Cam, I'm gonna win the whole race. <laughs> so um, that's my goal. No, I think we're just gonna have fun as a team and we're just gonna pack up and run together and feed off each other's energy. And then, um, you know, once you come off that last hill and you know have 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 800 meters to go it's kind of any any man's race but yeah hoping to bury cam before then no i don't have anything else i think we're good i think we're oh. good oh okay. oh my bad that you're looking at me i'm sorry say, if it comes down to 800 meters oh, you're all mine mate <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys for that first 20 minute session we really do appreciate, appreciate it we'll bring you back for the the group session at the end perfect Next up on the podcast for our second 20-minute session, we got another three people competing at the Mount Sac Cross, not the Mount Sac Cross Country, but at Cross Champs tomorrow for 10-minute elite. We got the Texas kid, the University of Houston distance legend, 2021 Olympic trials qualifier, Brian Barraza on the podcast with us as well. Then we got the California kid, a Santa Clara legend, Joey Barada coming in with it too. And then we have one of the hard-nosed blue-collar workers of 10 Men Elite, Drake University legend, world champs qualifier in the half marathon, a 214 marathoner, Reed Fisher, lastly joining us on the podcast, man. Hey, thank you guys for hey, coming hey, on thank hey, you guys hey. so much for coming on and uh i think it was drew that just alluded to it a second ago you guys are the bad high school runners but i wouldn't <laughs> i wouldn't say that i wouldn't hey. say that as well you guys were the high school runners that didn't get that shine as much as the other three over here but you guys really worked your tail off to get to that place of being that professional runners and i feel like especially at this time that we are right now and i feel like there's a conversation especially with the greatest high school cross country team of all time in Newberry Park. And that's become a conversation of all like, you got to make sure you keep on reaching for your goals and don't get uh, lost in what other people run and stuff like that. But before we get more into that conversation, I want to talk about just Mount Sac running a 10K cross champs. Brian, how are you feeling? It has to be tough. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's definitely going to be tough. We uh, we previewed the course. We were actually the ones that got to go see it, us and Drew. <laughs> and so... Yeah, jogging that course. We we were gonna jog the whole 10k, and uh, oh, we yeah. finished the first 5k loop, and we were like, yeah, we're uh, we're good. <laughs> those, those hills aren't gonna change by tomorrow. So, yeah, the it's definitely gonna be a, a mentally tough course, and we're gonna have to rely on each other's strengths to to get through it and feed off each other's energy. And Joey, did you race this in high school? Being from California, I ran at the Foot Locker meet my senior okay. year, but that was the only time I ran it. How did that feel? Uh, it was fine. I didn't run in the, the open race okay. to qualify for mm -hmm. Foot Locker Nationals. I ran in like the junior, senior boys open 5K and I won. So Yo, I got does. a winning record. Hey. And, yeah. <laughs> I can't lose tomorrow. I just got, go. I got, I got that momentum from nine years ago. <laughs> hey, pressure is a privilege, bro. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, no, no pressure here. <laughs> then for you, Reed, you didn't get to see it uh, today, but how does it just feel? Mount Sac, 10K, a lot of people are talking about it. Have yeah. you gotten any advice from anyone or, or anything? Yeah, we, I was with these guys. Oh, got you to were, run it. Okay. Um, yeah, it's funny. I think, I think, Brian said that he was going to sit on Jermaine. Uh, I, Drew said he was going to sit on Brian, and I said I was going to sit on Drew. So Jermaine's <laughs> going to be the first domino to fall, apparently. But no, I think, <laughs> like you said, um, every, everybody's we'll just going to have to. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Jermaine, we all know you're going to be right in the front that first mile. There's no <laughs> doubt in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but, but my fear as uh, the marathoner and the strength guy here is, is that everyone's just going to look at me and be like, this is your thing, man. Let's, <laughs> let's go. This is 10K. We don't run 10Ks. This is short for you. Um, so it might be me who ends up leading the charge until I get peeled off with 800 to go and everyone just out kicks me but it'll be fun either way <laughs> <laughs> that's what i literally i was about to say like me you too. being a marathoner are you do feel more confident about it but i don't know <laughs> the the uh, the hills of mount sag it's, it's definitely different but I, I feel like if you're able if you know how to race that course like you'll do much better because especially with all the downhill and going up as well but it's definitely a lot of the coaches always say it's more downhill than than uphill but like you run in y'all like is it really bro? <laughs> <laughs> like you're going to poop out and definitely going i had to do I actually had to do the four mile course on there so you have to go switch backs twice and low-key i went to the top and i was like dude should i walk right now but like you know i toughed it out i toughed it out <laughs> i toughed it out and finished but it's definitely really really hard but uh same question for um uh, actually we'll do a different little question just when did not starting from your absolutely like your journey of just sports but what was that moment for you in running where you feel like i can be a professional athlete in this like i want to pursue this and come to the next level did you get that like in high school did not come to college or was it even after college to when you're all like dang like i want to be a professional at this um i'll take this one first so i've actually been running for forever i started when i was seven so that's like 19 years now mm -hmm. uh, we're right with you we're right with you <laughs> there we go uh and i never really had uh <laughs> hey thanks buddy yeah <laughs> um my, my whole career is pretty much like marked by this idea of me not having any idea what's going on um i did like i didn't know how good you had to be to go to college i thought mm -hmm. i was actually of, of the opinion like that if a college coach didn't come to your house in high school that like you probably weren't gonna run in college it's like <laughs> I watched Without Limits once and I was like, that's how it is. <laughs> so uh, nice. there was just like, it was always marked by like, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Not like, is this a reasonable thing for me to want to do? So I never really doubted that I was going to be a professional athlete. I was just going to wait until that dream was either realized or completely crushed by reality. That's awesome too, because it's more so like you, you followed your passion more yeah. than anything. That's what you want to do. And that's where you are today. That's honestly, that's an inspiring story. Most yeah, definitely. I've been extraordinarily lucky. <laughs> <laughs> then for you, Joey, when was that moment to you were all like, man, I think I can really be a pro at this. Yeah, I mean, I had no reason to ever believe that I should be a professional runner, but I knew I wanted to be one ever since I started running. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the big goal when I transitioned from playing baseball to, to running track in my junior year of high school. And um, I think the moment where uh, I knew that I could be good at it was my my senior year of high school. We had our league championships at uh, this course called Crystal Springs, which was my home course. I mm -hmm. ran there every single day over the summer. It's very comparable to Mount Sac. It's just a dirt course and it's very hilly. Um, and I was racing up against guys that had beat me by like 30 seconds, you know, the couple of meets before in the season. And um, I ended up winning by about 10 seconds in that race. And I knew that I was like, hey, if I just show up to the starting line and I just try and run as hard as I can and I just try my best, I could be anybody on any given day. So that pretty much like solidified the mindset that I wasn't gonna be scared of anybody when I got in the starting line. Yeah. And as long as I just went out there and just like worked hard and did what I needed to do, I'd get there eventually, so. Dang, dang, that's a beast mindset. Definitely come from baseball to like cross country and track. That's definitely a weird experience. But I also wanted to ask too, weren't you running like the four by four at state and stuff like that? Yeah, I only made the state meet and and track running the four by four. I missed the <laughs> I missed the auto qualifier. What are you laughing at? Me? I, see you <laughs> <laughs> I split fifty one. I was fast. Hey, man. Hey, uh, no, that's okay. Oh, yeah. For my quads, yeah, it's fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, I missed the the mile auto qualifier by half a second, and then I got like second to last in the 800 at CCS, and then we qualified in the four x four. So I ran state in the four x four in high school. Hey, my dad always says, "Get in where you fit in." Right. You know yeah. I mean? You hey. still got that state patch. Right. Yeah. You gotta find a way, huh? <laughs> That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Then for you, Reed, when was that moment when you were like, "Dang, I can really be a pro at this"? Yeah. Um tomorrow hopefully <laughs> no i mean i really do think it's like like brian said it's like i've been extremely fortunate and you know i think it still seems like a dream in a lot of ways but yeah. i think you know you run every single day um and so i think it's not like a big moment i can really point to it's just like a series of small little things that boost your confidence like hitting a split you didn't think you could in a workout or placing high at a race than you you didn't expect to and just things like that that proved to yourself day in and day out that you're more capable than you thought and i think you know, like Brian, I've been doing this for a long time. So after 10 years of, of little wins day in and day out, you just yeah. start to have 
just this like unshakable confidence that just bleeds into how you show up on race day and how you carry yourself in practice and just the expectations you have for yourself. Yeah, I love to hear that all three of you, just like passion is what really fueled you. It wasn't like you just were 16, year old, 16 years old and got off the soccer team. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But no, passion is what really like pushed you all to where you are at this point and you didn't let you didn't let anything discourage you because you're sitting here today speaking to us. But what was what was that mindset in high school when you were racing and just approaching practice every day? And has it changed any now that you're a pro? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, in high school, I kind of like I was kind of like Jermaine. Uh, I relied on my natural talent and my vast amounts of uh training beforehand even though it wasn't like good quality training because you know i started off as a sprinter you know i was running the hundred but the first the event 100. i ever yeah the first event i ever medaled in was the turbo javelin <laughs> <laughs> so the like, turbo javelin. you know i've been all over the map i've i did a bunch of sports and stuff so it's like i had a lot of experience being athletic mm -hmm. but i didn't necessarily have all of those like i didn't roll out i didn't stretch like i didn't know anything mm -hmm. and so it was it was only really in college that i got those kinds of uh those skills and habits down and so i definitely relied on my my talent to get me through high school and and yeah things have changed a lot to to get to where i am now i learned from a lot of great people and was very fortunate to have a lot of people that knew what they were talking about in my corner throughout the years ever uh, ever since you know being in high school and not having a clue how to run a mile yeah, most definitely. You're not throwing the turbo jab anymore. <laughs> not like, anymore. That's a big change. That's well, a big I mean, change. we'll see. Get in where you fit in. <laughs> you got <laughs> a dub, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I was bronze. I was not going to talk about that. <laughs> metal still a metal. But for then, for you, Joey, like, what was your mindset going into high school? Like, going from baseball to, which is mainly like a sedentary, a sedentary like sport where you run base to base, you stand mm -hmm. out in the outfield, or you just pitch on the mound. Then now I'm running miles and running like at the, scratching my way to the state meet to get on like the four by four. What was your mindset in high school? Yeah, I mean, it was really like my high school coach was great because he was really good at just like keeping us healthy and under training us and really making sure that we were enjoying it. But he also demanded a lot from us um, in terms of he, you know, we had a lot of guys that just screwed around a lot of practice and he got very frustrated with them. So as long yeah. as you showed up to practice and you just tried your best and you worked your hardest, that's all that really mattered at the end of the day. Um, and that really clicked for me. But, you know, I was actually talking to Drew about some of my, and they're still laughing over there. Um, <laughs> I was talking to Drew. I looked through my high school logs. Um, I was running like 12 by 400, at like 65 down to 61, like in high school. Like, I don't know how I wasn't a four flat mile in high school. <laughs> it was crazy. And like, we just like, we worked really hard when we were on the track and I was in the pool twice a week doing our swim workouts at 6 a.m. Like my coach really instilled the idea, like this is just what it means to yeah. become successful. Um, and he knew that um, it was worth portraying to me that this wasn't gonna come right away and it was worth seeing it the whole way through. Um, and it really taught me a lot of patience um, and just going out there and just knowing that my day will come if I just keep showing up. Awesome, awesome. Then for you, for you, Reed, how was it for you, your mindset in high school? Yeah, I think Joey and I had pretty similar high school experiences. My coach really just focused on like finding a love for running first and then yeah. If you showed promise or showed enthusiasm for wanting to run more or run harder, um, he would give it to you. But yeah, I mean, I always joke that like the first year I went out for cross country, like I would run like a half mile to a basketball court, shoot hoops with my friends for 20 minutes and then run back and tell the coaches we'd ran for 5k. Uh, yeah. So that was my mindset initially. And then, like I said, like I just ended up sort of falling in love with the sport and finding that passion that you guys were talking about um, over time, really like it, it wasn't this instant flip of a switch or anything like that mm. it was just yeah showing up to practice hanging out with my friends and starting to run a little more and a little harder and then had a chance to run varsity for one cross country race and just like really liked the competition and like just just having that higher stage of like oh I'm, I'm competing against some of the best guys in my conference now and that was something i hadn't experienced before i wasn't sure how i was gonna like it but i kind of took to it and then ran with it yeah. as they say <laughs> so, <laughs> so a lot of your like success like you had a big jump from high school then when you once you got the drake where like you're an ncaa all-american and stuff mm -hmm. like that like what was that jump like for you once you got to college yeah um drake was super serendipitous for me for sure like i showed up and was just a walk-on like had ran 
very okay in high school, good enough to get me a walk-on spot at a mid-major D1 school. Yeah. Um, but I was really 429 that, high yeah, school miler. 429 high school miler. Uh, <laughs> but I was really fortunate that like a guy like Brogan was there. Um, mm-hmm. And at that point, Brogan, the spring before I joined the team, had had won the Drake Relays 5K and was the first Relays or Drake athlete to win the Relays in like 30 years. Right. Um, and, and Brogan is one of the most disciplined type A kind of people that I know besides Drew. Um, and, and those sort of things that he was able to show me through his example were super key for me to just like start demanding more out of myself. And so, yeah, I, I went from running 1609 in a cross country 5k my fall of my senior year in high school to running five mile tempo runs where I was splitting 16 flat, um, through the 5k split in my freshman year in the fall. Um, so yeah, just good people around me, good coaches, a lot of patience with myself and just understanding that, you know, it doesn't happen overnight and just making that jump. And I was a really late bloomer too. So I was just a little pipsqueak. I didn't break yeah. five feet until I was like 16. Um, so yeah, just growing into myself and, and getting a little bit more serious about things did a whole lot of wonder for me. And then for kind of looking at these guys over here, like these guys were sort of different from you. Like they were like the jerks almost, you know, <laughs> like they were like, oh, dang, they're running all that fast and stuff. Did that ever, because I feel like that conversation gets brought up a lot. You got to focus on you right now. Like, don't worry about how fast these guys are running. Were you guys worried about how fast those national champions and people were running? And if you were, how did you like overcome that? Or did that even get like crossed your mind did that discourage you have you seen people running like running 359 and stuff like (laughs) it's funny because like I actually like when I talked a little bit earlier about not having any idea of what was going on like that's a big part of it I was like the least running nerd kind of person Uh out there like it wasn't until my junior year in high school that I had any idea who Alan Webb was so like I did not know anybody on the high school running circuit and and where I grew up in El Paso is like pretty isolated even in terms of texas like we it was pretty much just the people in our area so but i measured myself against those people yeah. and against myself instead of against the people on the national stage and i was i was so naive that like i made a 22 second jump in the mile between my freshman and sophomore year and i was like i'm just gonna do that again next year and i'll be a four five <laughs> miler and then i'll have the world record by my senior year in high school like i don't care what, what's the big deal here like i just had no idea that that's not how it works yeah. that's crazy that's crazy, but sometimes having that mindset too is what keeps you going. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't let you be discouraged. But Joey, what was the experience like for you? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I really paid attention too much to what other people were doing. Um, I was aware that I was not the fastest out there, and I was aware that people were running very fast. Um, especially being at the California State meet, you know, mm-hmm. I got fifth at CCS, and I was like, all right, great, top ten at state, and I get like 39th, you know, and I just get my like doors blown off. I ran yeah. 1607 in the winter, ran 15 flat. Like that's, that was just like, um, it was such a humbling experience, but it was just that like little taste of like, oh, so this is how good you can get. If you like really like start working harder, if you really like keep at this, like that's the whole thing with like this, like my career so far, it's just like that. I get that little extra taste of like what it means to be at the next level. And that state meeting in high school was the first taste of like, oh, like these guys are really good, you know, mm-hmm. like better start bridging that gap. Like if you just stay at it, like they'll come back eventually. They can only get so much faster and I have a whole nother minute to improve. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I knew I knew about the good guys, but um, I knew that I could catch up to them eventually if I just kept working no matter how long it took, even if it took 10 years like right now (laughs) (laughs) we talked a lot about like pressure like pressure in the last group did you all feel that pressure like ah, i need to run fast so i could get into this school no Uh, (laughs) yeah like i said like for me my college search was much more about just academics and just like a place where i felt at home um running was super secondary like i looked at schools that didn't even have track programs. My second choice was a school that I could have only ran cross country and then read, I guess, ran unattached for, for track. Um, and obviously had I gone that route, like my life would look immensely different mm-hmm. than it does right now. Um, so yeah, for me, it was really just like, you know, I, I want to go to college and get an education and that's an opportunity that I have. So I'm going to make the most of it. Um, and if I can run while I'm doing it, great. Um, and yeah, like I said, like I was just super lucky that Drake had the infrastructure and, and the coaching with teammates that could push me to the next level. And, you know, I, I definitely didn't plan any of that. It was just super organic and something that I'm really grateful for. Wow. 
Yeah, it really, really is like just awesome just to see how you guys just kept on like persevering or not. I mean, you were either kept on persevering or persevering or you're kind of just like, oh, ignorance is bliss. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> I'm just going to do me and strive to be the best athlete that I can possibly be. And I think that really is the mission too. That's the mission for, I'm pretty sure for them too, as well as just a little extra pressure added on top of that. But it's something that I think we all want to strive for is just to be the best. And I feel like that's kind of just human nature, especially like for competitors like us that really want mm -hmm. to get to like that next, next level. And you guys want to get to that next level yesterday. Tomorrow, you're gonna have to go through Mount Sac. Just how are you, have you guys started preparing mentally a little bit for the race tomorrow? And just uh, what's your expectations going in, Brian? Yeah, we've definitely done a good bit of work to like, obviously the training that we've done, but mentally, you know, you always got to give the event the respect that it's due. You know, you, you go into a 5K thinking it's going to be easy. It'll teach you real quick. It's not going to be easy. Running that course today, we're telling ourselves it's going to be really hard. So that way we're not surprised by anything that comes up tomorrow. <laughs> um, I think that most of it is going to be how, how well can we manage our energy in that first half and make sure that we get to the second half feeling as smooth as possible. And, and that's when the real racing starts. Yeah. And then for you, Joey, like I ran Mount Sac a lot in high, in high school and, and in club as well and club cross country but now that i go back and like run the course like a little bit like even just jogging through it i'm all like dang this course isn't as hard like you can i see how hard it is like, this is but a soft record <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that that record's not soft for me not soft for me <laughs> but it's like it's i feel like just being like a little bit stronger and knowing more about the course it doesn't feel as hard as it is i know you only got to race it once but is that how you feel like about it a little bit as well you know i think i feel the exact opposite when i was running yeah. today i was like <laughs> I forgot how steep these hills are. <laughs> oh, like I, I forgot. I was like, guys, like these hills are hard, but they're manageable. Like you can get through it. Yeah. And I'm sure based on our mindset that Brian had mentioned just now that like, if we anticipate that it's going to suck, if we anticipate that those hills are really going to be hard and we're really going to suffer, it maybe won't be as bad. It still could be as bad as we anticipate. But, um, if we go in there knowing that we have to work hard, um, we set ourselves up to only succeed from there. Um, so, I mean, like I said, I, growing up in Northern California, I'm used to, you know, running a thousand feet of climbing per day. Um, you know, long runs are 2,500 feet of climbing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not scared of hills per se, but I know that if you're having an off day, they're really going to hurt. Um, mm -hmm. so like Brian said, we have to respect the course. We have to respect our competitors, um, because cross country is so up in the air. Sometimes, sometimes talent isn't going to get you, um, yeah. very far versus, some guys just, you know, a course can play better into their hands than it could into yours. So um, I think that's why we're all like looking forward to it. Just seeing like, how is this going to play out? Like we have no idea who's going to be the one kicking for the win at the end, whether it's the six of us or just one of us, you know, like mm -hmm. we just have to give it the respect and just go out there and have fun and see what happens. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Then last question for Reed, then we'll move on to our group. Just like, how excited are you to just be like running cross country again? I know you guys, you guys would do like the USATF, like the club cross, but to, like for me, this is a real cross country course. Like <laughs> over there running in like PA and like the the mud and through puddles and stuff. That's like, what are, what's, what's Jermaine, what's going on? Like, you know I mean? <laughs> like what's going on? Like where's the hills at? How does it feel to be like on Southern California, like on the, on the West coast, like doing some real cross country? and being back and like just coming back with the team and everything like that the best yeah coast. uh i think it's gonna be a shock to the system for sure like the last race i ran was chicago which is as flat as you can possibly find yeah. uh, but it's a marathon so it's like i'm banking on hurting a lot more for a lot less time is is kind of what i've been telling myself it's like yeah it's gonna feel miserable from the gun on because i'm running really fast um comparatively but i only have to do it for half an hour instead of over two hours um so no i'm excited you know i think Cross country is where everybody starts in the sport, plus or minus, unless you're doing the turbo jab. Uh, <laughs> what that means. Yeah, whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> but most people find a love for running through cross country if you're on the endurance side of things. Um, so, yeah, I, I think this team, we're a team, and, and we love the roots of the sport, and this thing ticks both those boxes. We get to compete for one another and with one another, and we also get to kind of go back to the thing that made us love running in the first place, which is over the river and through the woods not just <laughs> another trip to grandma's house right drew <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you guys so much for joining us for a 20 minute session we'll do with all all of y'all now in a sec but appreciate you guys good luck tomorrow all right y'all so we're gonna finish up with a couple questions but one thing we really been wanting to ask because like joshua said with newberry park 
there's been a conversation in like the Twitter in the Twitter world about like successful athletes. Particularly, I'm just gonna go straight to it. Particularly, you know, there was like people are seeing the all time list at the state me and there there's people are saying, Hey, like those eleven or twelve people on oh, there only one of them had a successful like career after high school. And I, I'm being from California myself, I look at that group that group, I know some of the people, I'm like, I mean, he 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 did he did good. <laughs> like I'm trash. If this guy <laughs> if this guy had a terrible career, I'm trash. So I wanted to ask you all too, like, how do you define success? What is a successful season for for ten men, and how do you define that? I should answer this because I peaked in high school. So <laughs> um, I think a successful season, well, I, it looks so different. I yeah, think it's there's very relative. Yeah, I think there's like um, there's a lot of different ways to answer this. I I, I think for all of us after a rough last year, I think a successful season was us finding love for running again and enjoying racing. And I think that process was going to allow us to PR, mm -hmm. win races, get to the level. So I think um, success for me, it, and I know a lot of us, we had a big team meeting a few months ago and it was the big theme from Coach Hunter was, you know, like let's start to enjoy what we do again and everything will fall into place after that. And I like that because when I think of success too and happiness, it's bigger than just, a time or like a place like for myself you know i didn't go i didn't go pro and get signed but do i think i'm having some success in life you know do you think my you know my time running track was successful and it led me to where i am you know what i mean so i just think that's important for high schoolers to see too when people put out those tweets and stuff like that saying you know some a guy that was all american or in like 1340 in high school shout out Lane Worley you can't tell me my boy didn't have a successful college career like yeah 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 you know you know what I mean so I had to just get that get that off my chest to to start that off um but also with all of the with Tim and two you guys do so much off the track and what has it been like to just see you know even like this meet cross champs you know there's a there's a live podcast Alexi Poplis is doing a movie, a movie night, there's an after party. What's it been like seeing like this, being a part of the new wave and just seeing all these different things change in our sport over the past, 2017 is when you all started. So over like the past like three to four years. I'll answer this one. Uh, it's refreshing. I was a fan of Tin Man before, you know, I'm, I'm one of the newer guys on the team. Cal and I joined, you know, last year. So we got kind of got to see, you know, what these guys had started kind of running is one of these sports where it's kind of like you've got this kind of like facet of old old white men that have an idea of what running is you know and that's kind of like you can't have this personality you can't do this you can't you just got to train keep it quiet and be like Gale. we were talking about it um, be like gail and rupp you know don't tweet don't have a twitter presence and uh seeing these guys uh just kind of ditch the status quo and just kind of see an inside light into you know runners being just normal people i think that's what people liked about tin man is that you know you're not just seeing the the workouts it's the in you know max is inside tin man elite series where you're seeing behind the scenes you know what they're doing before races what we do, what they're doing before workouts i think uh that was something that was really huge to see it is like you know there's more to us than just being runners we're you know everyday people too and you know getting to see everybody else's kind of story and personality is what uh I think the new wave is really doing really well. You know, new generation, all those kind of people. You're just showing the personalities in track as opposed to just times. And, you yeah. know, you don't have to be the fastest person to be popular. And that's kind of what it was, you know, a little while ago when I was growing up. It was the Oregon project that, you know, everybody looked up to them because they were just fast. Mm -hmm. But there was no personalities behind it other than Sir Mohamed Farah. He was the <laughs> yeah. biggest personality in the sport. <laughs> but uh, my hero. But, uh, <laughs> that's what it, I, think, I think that's what's really cool about, you know, the new generation of uh, athletics. It's, you know, you're getting to know people as runners as opposed to just, you know, individuals who run fast times. 
Yeah, I definitely agree. Like track and and running just in general, it was like sometimes people take it as much as like a, a good old boy sport, like something like tennis or golf where we got to give like little claps. But I also I'm all I just don't understand that because I feel like running like to achieve like running and like to go through like the gritty of it. It's something that's so like personal to you and something that's like so hard to accomplish. It's hard to just keep that all in and just not to have that personality and express everything that you want to express. It's all like how how can I really hold all of that back? And you guys let it all out, basically, especially like through your guys' YouTube series and read you being now oh, one of the one of the vets on like 10 Men Elite. How has it just been for you to see like the development of like the group in a way as you guys are touching a lot of touching a lot of high school's hearts and motivating them throughout everything? Yeah, I mean, I think whenever anybody asks me like, oh, did you ever expect this? Or like, was this your plan from the start? The answer is always no. Um, you know, I think we just like training with each other as people. And, and we understood that there was more to what we were doing than just showing up in, at practice in Boulder and running. Um, and so kind of hodgepodge a website together and made an Instagram profile that was just iPhone pictures and videos for the first year or so. Um, and I think it was just really fun and it still is and that's why I think everybody is is up here is because we enjoy what we're doing and you know we could be doing just about anything else running is a hard thing it takes a lot out of yourself and and just a lot of focus and a lot of sacrifice but we're all here because we enjoy what we're doing um and so I think yeah it's been really cool to see the the growth of the team and and we've matured in a lot of ways as a team and as people as individuals but also just have learned a lot over the last year about like what we care about and what we need to prioritize and the people that we hold close to us. Um, and I think that's, you know, something that everybody learns at some point in life and you learn it in different stages and in different amounts. Um, but I couldn't be more proud of, of these guys and, you know, running with that logo on our chest now, it's just, it's always meant something, but it, it means a little more just knowing where we've come since 2017. And yeah, it's, it's really a special thing that, you know, I, I, I'm super proud to have been a part of and, and help create. And for you, Joey, like you have became a social media star, basically. <laughs> really? Like, honestly, <laughs> you got like two nicknames. Have you seen it and stuff? Oh yeah. And I feel like you're, I feel like you're like a, a inspiration as well. But you just showed up. Like I, I was seeing you showed up with just a black tee. Right. And it was like, yo, put me on the team. Like I'm trying. Yeah. To, I'm trying to maybe go not after that you. direct, but. Um, <laughs> I was like, can I, I messaged Reed on Instagram. I was like, can I run with you guys? And he's like, yeah, Thursday, 8 a.m., be there. I was like, all right, I'll be there. <laughs> and I didn't say a word the whole run, I think. Yeah. Um, I made one joke on the second half of the run just to show him I, I'm funny, and that was about it. But <laughs> Kept him around. Yeah. It was, it was a good joke. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, just what's so great about this sport that you don't see in other sports is in other sports, like baseball, people tell you when you're done, right? Like, in running, you, like, you're the only one that can tell yourself when you're done. Um and I just wanted to like show to myself and others that that could become a reality if you just decided to go for it. Obviously there's, and this isn't like an, this isn't an unfamiliar thing in running. Like people run after college, Aaron, like you ran after college, right? Like this isn't unfamiliar. I just got somehow really lucky being put in a position where like, we just like ended up gaining a lot of spotlight out of it. Um, and uh, like, I just wanted to be that like, that voice or that, that image to a high school kid that's running 16 flat for a 5k or a college kid that's running 1430 for 5k to be like, Hey, if you want to keep doing this, you keep doing it, man. Like nobody's going to tell you when you're done except for yourself. So might as well go for it if you really want to do it. And if you'll, if you want to figure it out, you'll figure it out. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been quite a ride. And, um, I mean, I, I'm not successful unless I have these guys behind my back. So, um, it's been, it's been great. And Drew, like, it has to be just crazy, you know, like, after you graduated, you're like, am I going to go pro? Am I going to go to college? And you chose to go to pro and you didn't have like a team to train with. And now you have like all these brothers and this just popped into my head. Like you have all these brothers and like your family too. Like you, you have a lot of like adopted siblings and everything. What has it been like for you to like see the development of this entire team? Yeah, Mark and John Hunter love adopting. They just got <laughs> 10 more kids. So, um, but yeah, it, it, it's like Reed said, I always, you know, going to echo the same thing. Like we didn't expect this at all. And um, I wish Sam was here. He'd go on a 10 long, 10, 10 minute long story about it. Super like dramatic and everything. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, like Reed and I literally met once, <laughs> texted, and we're like, hey, you want to move to Boulder? And had like, literally, I'm not kidding, like shaken hands. That was the time we talked and got an apartment together and just figured it out. And then everyone else followed suit. Um, so for where it's at now, where we have, you know, Max making basically a documentary about us and we get to do events with, you know, every race we're at, we're doing events with the community and people want us to be there and mm -hmm. to have, you know, to see just Tin Man merch in the crowd. Like, I think like that's, that's so cool. Um, so I never thought it would get this far and I think we're excited to see how much farther we can take it. Yeah, and really shout out Max. I don't, you do all that, bro. Like that's fire. The Inside Tin Man Elite yeah. Series really is fire and then especially like for someone like brian i know you're also like a creative as well like you, you do your drawings and stuff like that but now diving more into like this social media side of things where like it really it really like i'm pretty sure y'all be getting stopped at random places like i feel like really like 10 minute lead and then let me mistake me if i'm wrong but even like team boss like you guys are low-key like boulder sport teams in a way you know like you guys really represent for like that city but especially like the social media aspect how is it now like managing all of that becoming new to really this being exposed to all of this how is it managing social media and everything now oh man i am probably the worst person to ask about social media i like i'm, I'm a pretty uh slow pace of life kind of guy like the the speed at which social media moves is really quick for me um but i think the the biggest thing that I've taken away from it is like, I'm not afraid to be myself on social media anymore. When I first started as a pro, I like, I kind of had this idea of what a pro runner was supposed to be and look like and say, and like, like that's kind of coming from the old world, like mm. wh what we were kind of talking about earlier. But it's like now, whenever I'm making a post, I'm just kind of like, is this true to me? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say it then. Like, I don't really care. I'm not going to think over like, how, who is this going to upset or, or who's going to look at this and be like, oh, yeah. that, guy, that guy looks dumb, you know, but, but it's been, it is, a, it has been also really cool to have the other side of it, which is like the Tin Man profile and like the, the, the recognition and the platform that we have as a, as a group, instead of just as individuals is so much more powerful. And it, it puts us in a position where we're able to come and do these kinds of things. And that's the thing that I, I really take away from it. I was never in this for recognition or, anybody to come and, and shake my hand but now i'm in a position where like something i say here could matter to somebody yeah and it could be the thing that that keeps them running for longer or shows them hey like this isn't the thing for you find something that you are really passionate about whatever the case may be like having those conversations and breaking down those barriers with the community is what this has all really been about for me on on the the social media side of things yeah, I love that. I love that. And before we get to like the Q and A portion, I have a question for all of you guys that I would like you guys can answer. This can be kind of quick, but like for we start off with Cam. But I know we're racing cross country tomorrow. Usually, cross country has uh, five runners that score, but we'll just go with four here. And you can pick one guy from this team as well. But if you have to go to a race and the battle, like I'm, I'm going in to win. My all time list of people that I want to race, my top four that are going to score at this meet. Anyone you can pick, dead or alive, who are those other two people? You can pick someone from this group. Like you feel, you don't have to pick them. But I, I don't know if you like, you may feel bad if you leave someone out. You feel me? It's a cross country race. Yeah, it's a cross country race. We'll, we'll make it. We'll make it a 10k since you are racing the 10k tomorrow. But who are those other one person from here? Then those other two people that you'll pick and we'll do everybody down the line, like your all time dead or alive kind of list and one ten minute lead guy. Man, that's tough. Um, yeah, I could probably just throw a dot at anyone on the team and. I'd be very happy with like yeah. who it landed on and be like, all right, yep, sweet. I'd yeah. love to race with that guy. Uh, this is my, I mean, this is my first cross country race with the team, so I, it's kind of hard to say. But this is supposed to be a quick question. Yeah, I know. I'm really, <laughs> I've really ruined this. Um, all right, I got mine. <laughs> yeah, Reed, you got it. <laughs> yeah, me, because I have to be on my own team, right? Yeah, yeah, all yeah. All right, yeah, Garrett Heath, oh. the grass monster. Joshua Chepta guy, because that guy can fight more than anybody else. And then I got one more. Yeah, one more. I'll do Sir Mo Farah for Jermaine. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, you want to go next? Uh, d was part of the criteria we had to pick somebody on the team? You don't have well. to, but no, I didn't. I kind of want to. I haven't raced against Goose in a really long time, or I think at all. Uh, so I would probably pick Goose as my teammate. Um, he's so talented, and when he's like such a fighter. Um, so whenever I have a chance to race against him, I love to see how I stack up. Yeah. Um, 
In terms of the other people, uh, German Fernandez, circa 2000, whenever he was <laughs> running 14-24 yeah, yeah. um, at the California State Meet, because that's just a different form. Um, whichever one of the Salman brothers just ran 1426 um because that's really hard um and then i uh geez what's the last one i would say um andy vernon he's another oh. big fella that was uh pretty good on cross yeah I, I like i like i like i like those i like those big runners so um he's got big quads like me so i'm picking him we're a we're an underdog underdog team uh i'm gonna pick an all-star team. mo farah messing around yeah so <laughs> Kenisa Bekele, he's like a seven or eight time world cross champion. I don't know why no one's paid, like one of the greatest guys. <laughs> I, I'll take Mo Farah. I'll t- yeah. <laughs> I'll take Halle Gabri Selassie. I'll let Chapter Guy take my spot. <laughs> <laughs> and on the team, Drew can be in. That's a, that, is a, that is an all star team. That's pretty good. Um, I think I would go with from the team if we're doing this. Is, is this on Mount Sac? Uh, what? Let's, yeah, let's yeah, say, I've been thinking Mount All right, cool. Then I'm, I'm going to go with Joey. Oh. Yeah, oh. he can crush up hills and he can crush down hills and he knows the course. Yeah, me, me Joey, um, Craig Mottram, and, and uh, Chris Alinsky. Okay, okay, okay. High sock, Chris. High, high sock, high yeah, that's high compression, sock. Sock. compression socks, yeah. And then, Cam, you got yours or you want Drew to go? <laughs> Well, I just got I just got the big Mazunga stolen from me, <laughs> so I can't pick him anymore, can I? I was just going to pick a team of Aussies, just me, Ollie, Morgan, and Stewie Mac. Oh, I like that team. I like that team. A bunch of Milers. <laughs> Drew, You're your team. Uh, I got Max, <laughs> Jacob Hunter, and my brother Noah Hunter. Let's go. Wow. <laughs> Dream Let's team. Go. That'll do it. I like that. All right, now we're going to get into these Q&A questions. The first one for everybody, we got some people racing tomorrow. So uh, how fast are y'all going out tomorrow? Hey. <laughs> oh, I got this. I think my guess is our first mile will be 453. He's actually really good at guessing splits. So um, my, my guess was that we're going to go out conservative and then probably back off. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then finish a little bit slower than that. Reed, what are you taking us out in? <laughs> as fast as necessary. <laughs> 443 first mile. That, those loops are quicker than you think. Mm-hmm. It's net downhill, too. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going out in 453. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sitting on Jermaine, so. Uh, Six I, flat, then. I got another one. Uh, what is the best advice for a high school senior going into the last of the going into his last track season and he needs to run fast times to get to college? I feel like we might have answered this during the podcast, but I feel like we should answer this if the person's here. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really think it's like we talked about it earlier a little yeah. bit, but it's like the running world's gotten even smaller than it already was just by virtue of social media and it's like yeah you hear about newbury park being the best of all time and and you know i remember when drew was coming up like the amount of spotlight on him compared to like when i was going through high school it was like i knew the people in my state and that was it just because i was seeing them um so i really think it's not about wanting it more sometimes or, or you know just beating your head against the wall and hoping you can run harder workouts or more mileage and just trying to reinvent the wheel um it's just being true to yourself and thinking about what's worked best in the past, you know, pick out the races where you thought you were the most successful and identify what went well before that and try and maximize those things and it'll come. I think no matter what, no matter how you run, if you want to run in college, there's going to be somebody who believes in you. Um, it's just a matter of finding who that person is. You don't have to go to Stanford. You don't have to go to, uh, what are other good running schools? You don't have to go but to if Oregon. You can, that's a really good degree. Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> you don't. You don't have. You don't have to go Power Five. You don't have to even go D one. You don't have to go D two to become a successful runner in college. Um, if you find a coach and a team that believes in you, um, they're going to believe in you regardless of what you've run. Uh, to let go of, of times and needing to do things and just letting things work out the way they're going to work out and knowing that you've done your best at the end of the day, that's what's going to take you to the next level, in my opinion. 
Yeah, I think that's a really great point. I, I look at it as like the paradox of performance. It's like when you are when you really care about it, you're holding on so tightly that sometimes you stop yourself from performing the way that you want to perform. But if you allow yourself to relax and, and pay attention to why it is that you're doing this in the first place and really being in touch with what you care about and, and what aspects of the sport is, is it that you truly enjoy, then you can focus more on that part of the process. And, and once you're focused on the process, good things come. Um, another one. There's just so many good ones here. Uh, here, Drew, this is for you. Just, just like. <laughs> um, if he wants it. <laughs> Ask Drew how tough he thinks the Foot Locker course is, and then tell him the Mount Sac course is tougher <laughs> from the kid wearing the Jamal Toad shirt. <laughs> Yo, you ready? <laughs> All right, I'll get back to you tomorrow. <laughs> Yo, that's funny. That's funny. Um, other than that, what is, what's your guys' hands-down favorite Adidas shoe? The Adios Pro 2. Or Nova. I was going to say trainer or, or flat. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Ye my Yeezy slides. Yeezy slides. Am, I, am I going to the store? What's going on here? <laughs> Takumi Sen. The new Tin Man Boston available at all good retail stores. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta throw that in there. Gotta throw that in there. Well, for real though, the, the new Boston shoe is my favorite. It's a very versatile uh, shoe that you can use for pretty much everything. That's hands down my favorite Adidas shoe that I've ever had. All right. All right. One last question. How is it like running in Boulder with all the other pro teams? Do y'all hang out with them or you don't mess with them? <laughs> no, everybody's great. I think, in my opinion, just being like, feeling like I was on the outside of the professional scene coming in. Um, the fact that you can have like five or six Olympians working out on the middle school track at the same time is insane, right? So yeah. it's just like a super cool experience. I think for the most part, everybody's like super supportive of each other and is willing to like be, you know, vocally supportive towards one another and cheer each other on during workouts. Um, and just it's like a great community to be a part of um at least at the surface level i don't know if everybody's just talking trash behind their backs but um yeah it's it's awesome that everybody can just like work out and just do their thing and just try and be their best the real question joey is are you talking trash behind your back because if you are everyone else definitely. only behind reed's back <laughs> can confirm <laughs> i live with him i'll see myself <laughs> Well, all right. I think that's all we have for y'all. We're just going to cl close out the podcast. Joshua, you going to do your little thing? Yeah, I just appreciate you guys for really coming out. This is really a big thing. And they do it here at Run Republic. Appreciate you guys so much and everybody that came out. I hope to do this more and more. I hope to connect with you guys more because y'all are doing such a great thing for the running world. And I really think, like, you guys being this team and the wave that you have created in running has really initiated a lot of things and a lot of people are following a lead as you guys are the lead of the new wave most definitely and best of luck tomorrow you're man like dude <laughs> like tell me how it feels bro i just want to know how it feels <laughs> like to go around for that second loop after the first 5k like that's gonna be that's gonna be an experience you know that really is it's gonna be an experience but yeah good luck tomorrow right we really do appreciate y'all coming on appreciate it thank you for thank having you. us we thank you it.